everybody, welcome back. Now, as you can see, I'm not sat in the caravan today. No, in actual fact, our caravan is being serviced. That's right. It seems to be that an entire year has gone by with us in the new caravan. But the uh, year in review and also the new servicing, which has taken place today, well, that's for a feature in a later video, which will be coming out to you in a couple of weeks. But today, I need to talk to you about the NEC shows. In fact, we're just a couple of weeks right now away from the motorhome and caravan show at the NEC. And I thought I would share with you a survival guide based upon my attendance at the NEC over the last few years. You see, over the last few years, I've been able to pick up some hints and some tips, and I see the questions being asked even now for people who have never attended the show. What should I take? What should I bring? What should I expect? So I thought today, let's go through it, and this is my top 10, in no particular order, survival guide for the NEC. So these topics which I'm going to go through today will make do for either show, either the motorhome and caravan show, which is in the October, or the caravan camping and motorhome show, which is at the NEC in the February. All these topics are valid for both shows, so let's get into it. And number one is booking your tickets. Now it goes without saying that if you're interested in the show, then you should book your tickets early. You see, the earlier you book them, the more likely you are to get an early bird discount. But if you miss out on the early bird discount, don't fret if you're a member of either of the national clubs. In the magazines or on the websites, they usually got member only discount codes, which you can apply when you buy your tickets and you can get a couple of quid off. Even then, if you miss out on those offers, have no fear, there's lots of companies that offer competitions and prizes for anybody who wants to attend the show. But even after all of that, if you've missed out on every opportunity and every option and you're not a member of any of the clubs, please do buy your tickets in advance. You see, you will be queuing to purchase your tickets on the day and then you'll be queuing to actually get into the show. So it's worthwhile to have a ticket printed off, ready on the day, so you can just walk straight in to the show. Now, number two, again, way in advance of the show, plan your trip. You'll be going for very specific reasons, no doubt, either to have a general wander, to see what's coming out in the new season, to have a look around accessories or to purchase something. You will have very definite reasons for your attendance. Now on the organizer's website, you will find a map that you can download, you can print off and you can have a look at. And it's worthwhile using that map to plan your day. You see the show will be separated into very separate zones. So it's worthwhile knowing that you don't wanna spend all your day in one part of the show, which has got no relevance to you at all. And other parts of the shows and other halls, which would be your best bet for whatever your reason for attending. So download the map, have a look at it and research your visit. It's worthwhile doing just as a general idea to work out whether you're going to start at this end of the NEC or that end of the NEC. Now, number three, when you actually attend the NEC, you will be directed to specific car parks. On the day they change, depending on other shows and other exhibits, which is taking place at the NEC. Follow the on-site routes to the parking and make use of the free parking and the free shuttle bus, which takes you from the car parks to the show entrance. Because the shows are quite big, you will be walking around quite a lot. So if you can negate any walking to and from the car parks, it's worthwhile doing. Now, number four, talking about footwear and clothing. Traditionally, the NEC is quite a hot place. They turn the heating on and it is quite a warm environment. So if it is tipping down with rain outside, make use of the cloak rooms that the NEC offer. Also, make sure you're wearing appropriate footwear. You will be clocking up quite a few steps during the day. Make sure you're wearing comfortable shoes. It really is quite surprising how much people walk during the day. Now, number five, take a rucksack. Even if you are or are not buying anything at the show, take a rucksack and perhaps take a couple of bags for life wrapped up in there as well, because the chances are you will be picking up a few bits and bobs which you never anticipated that you will buy. In fact, it's quite a ruthless place because we end up spending quite a few pounds there. So even if we're not in the mood for spending anything, we always come home with cheese and sausage and uh, a few knickknacks as well that we never really needed anyway, but we end up spending those whilst we're there. So it's worthwhile taking a rucksack. 
If you don't have a rucksack or you're not in the mood for a rucksack, don't worry. A lot of the accessories stores sell these wheelie crates, which are really very useful for use in the caravan. They're even more useful in and around the show. Because the NEC is completely flat, you can walk around with these uh, wheelie bins and they're really useful. You can pack a lot of stuff in them and they're great for lifting in and out of the cart as well. We bought a, a few of those a few years ago and we use those in the caravan when we're packing food or packing clothes into the van. They're very, very useful to have. Some of them come with cool bag inserts, which you can literally strap in, and some of them come with lids as well. So it's worthwhile. They're not much money. They're certainly under a tenner, so it's worthwhile looking out for those to wheel around any bits and bobs that you purchase on the day. Now, number six, take your own food and drink. The NEC can be quite expensive for refreshments. So certainly, at minimum, take a bottle of water because you will get thirsty quite a bit. Certainly try and take your own sandwiches if you are in the mood for something to eat because the food there can be very expensive. Somebody once said it's like uh, eating at a service station, you know, is those inflated prices. They've got a captive audience and they're going to monopolize on that. So if you can, and if you're in the mood and you're well prepared, take your own packed lunch. That said, if you haven't taken a packed lunch, don't worry, there's lots of places for you to eat. You'll just need to take out a second mortgage to eat there. Now, number seven, if you are buying a caravan or a motorhome or a camper or a static home, don't feel pressure that you have to do the deal there and then on that day. In a lot of occasions, the sales teams are authorized and they can offer you a ticket to return on a second day. So if you want to go away, have a think about it, do your sums, have a mull over whatever it is that you're going to be buying, ask for that second ticket and you can return the day after and hopefully do the deal. You certainly don't feel pressured that you have to do the deal there and then. There are lots of sales teams from lots of dealerships all around the country. They'll all be there on the stands throughout all the manufacturers. People will be there to offer you a fantastic deal. So have a chat with them, but don't feel pressured that you have to do it there and then, even though they might be trying to squeeze you for doing that deal. Now, number eight, I'm talking about the live theater. On the day that you attend, it's worthwhile heading over to see who's going to be on stage during that day. There are certainly lots of keynote speeches. There are people who do demonstrations and people who talk to you about the industry in general. It's worthwhile going to see who's going to be on stage during that day. Lots of various topics, lots of demonstrations, and you can plan your day around anything that might interest you. Certainly one of the very first occasions that me and Angela attended, we popped by the live theater because we saw John Wickersham doing a fantastic speech about what to look for if you have leaky water. It was very fascinating and really worthwhile us doing. And I had a great Great opportunity to speak to John as well. Now number nine, something which isn't often talked about, but it's using the stop and shop. At the NEC there is a small area for allowing you to place your accessories as you buy them. Certainly if you're buying things like awning furniture, maybe even an awning, maybe anything that you're buying and it's a bit bulky and you don't want to carry around all day, you can use the stop and shop and pile up your accessories or your purchases that you're making throughout the day. You can then return at the end of the day, collect them all and head off back to your car. It's worthwhile doing because it's there in a facility, it's free, take use of it if you're buying accessories. Now, number 10, my last point is to take some cash. Some of the smaller vendors there, they may only operate in cash. Some of them have got the PDQs. In my experience, that's not always fail safe. Some of these little payment methods, they do fail, they do stop and they don't work. And of course you then have to go and get cash. And that's a, sometimes a problem at the NEC. You see, there's only a few cash machines dotted around the entire area and invariably they run out of cash pretty quick. So if you can withdraw some cash beforehand, stuff it into your wallet and go to the show with it. It means you don't have to queue up at the NEC cash machines, which usually run out of cash anyway. And certainly the smaller vendors, which offer things like uh, cheeses and sausages and uh, all sorts of wonderful things around the air perimeter of the show, I'm sure they'll be very happy to deal with you in the cash basis. Now there are lots of reasons why you should go to the NEC. There are lots of attractions and there's lots of things for you to see, do and enjoy. 
This video really isn't about that. I'll let the promoters deal with how to promote their own shows. This is basically my experience of the NEC, and these are things which I would hand over to you as advice for if you're attending the show. Certainly, if you're interested in what's on at the show, head on over to the organizer websites. I'll put a link to those down below. And if you are attending, you know, do take your time and enjoy it. There's lots of things to do there. I would doubt very much if you do the whole show in one day. I tried to once, didn't work. So there we go. I hope this video has been useful for you. Please hit the subscribe button down below, hit the notification icon as well, so you'll be up to date when we release new videos. And if you are attending the NEC and you see me, do pop by and say hello. I'm always happy to speak to anybody on the floor as I'm walking around. Even if it does look as if I'm a bit busy, I'll always take the time to say hello. So thanks for watching. Till the next time, guys. See you soon. Bye bye now. This time there's a load of Swifts, are So this is the Swift Contiki 650. Oh, it is beautiful around here. Right, come down here. Strip is that you can stick it to a surface. <laughs>